On today's episode, my band's ticket sales are up. Why might that be? I'm going to let you into a few secrets in today's episode. Of 30 Minute Music Marketing, Q title sequence. 30 Minute Music Marketing, for musicians who want to get better at marketing their music. Hi, I'm Greg. Hello, I'm Sheldon, and this is 30 Minute Music Marketing, the show for independent artists and DIY musicians who want to get better at marketing their music. Thanks very much for watching or listening to the current episode. We love and appreciate your support. Subscribe to us, click the bell the, on, on the YouTube, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, and tell your musician friends about us. Now then, on today's deep dive, Greg. You really are getting into it, aren't you? I, I'm, I'm very much so. I'm looking, I'm looking forward. I look forward to this. Okay, go Each on. and every week to, you know, speaking to our our 30 Minute Music Marketers. So I'm halfway through my band's current winter tour. Yes, you are. And I know that pretty much across the board, uh, my band's ticket sales have increased. Year, certainly uh, over last year, um, I'm now selling out a lot of venues that I didn't do before. And the venues where I'm still selling out, the sellouts are being achieved quicker than ever before. Ticket, demand for my band's tickets has increased. has increased over the past 12 months. And I think there's a reason for it. And but I think that before if, you go into that, carry on, yes. Would you say also in respect to not only the ticket sales, but would you say that the, your merch sales has increased as well? Yeah, but I'm, I'm not. I don't want to. I don't want to deviate from the, no, the, no, the topic saying, on the discussion. Overall, once you, you've got more people there, and when they are there, they're spending more money. Yes, yeah, that, and that's it, what it, I was it, to get yeah. It goes. It goes to say that that that, that statistically, if there's more people at, at the gig, then you're going to sell more in merch anyway. That's that's one of the one of the additional benefits. Right, so sorry. I th I thought because we always talk about reflection on this podcast and how if we if we set out to reflect we can aid learning so this yep. is more or less the thing for me and for the the listener slash viewer at home to hopefully take take away some of uh, what I think uh, are the changes that have happened now the interesting thing about all of this is that all this has been achieved in, in terms of the past twelve months without any new music from my band. And one of the things that's always said Not is Not a that single new piece of music. There was one uh, remix of a track in January. That doesn't really count, does it? It doesn't really count. It's not, it was a, you know, a new release, but not new music as such. So you haven't done anything at all since your last album? No. And how so, when did that come out? That came out about 18 months or so ago. And you know, it's always said that one of the catalysts for, for growth and for audience engagement is new music. I get to see that a lot. Everyone seems to think, oh, the new, the next new thing is going to be the thing that's the catalyst to getting them into and, people's experience. And I, I'm not discounting that completely, but I'm just positing and illustrating my individual set of circumstances over the past 12 months. And, and, and which doesn't include new music as maybe a different model for, uh, for DIY musicians to potentially adopt. Okay, so where does it start? Uh, at the start of the year, so I decided, I realised that my band work wasn't going to do uh, an album this year, so I thought, right, what do I need to double down on instead? And that was pretty much content. And I realised that because the majority of the income from my band, maybe about 80% of our revenue comes from live shows, that one of the things that we should do is to uh, release a lot of, performance or live music videos. Now we have a couple of months off at the start of every year because we're very tired from, from touring at the end of the year. I'm sure, right. I'm you, sure you can- all the Christmas dinners? It could well be the Christmas dinners oh, okay, right. and the Christmas jumpers uh, for, the, the Christmas uh, for the viewers at home. So uh, I realized that I had a first couple of months whereby I wasn't gonna be able to record any performances. So I decided to create a, almost like the equivalent of a clip show. So I took maybe four individual old performances, created new links for those and created like a 15, 20 minute YouTube show repurposing old content. So when you said that you just repurposed old footage. Yes. In terms of just because for the viewers and listeners, but mm. uh, the other side of there, screen camera I don't know um, what 
what content is this? Is this, so, as in, is this mobile phone stuff or is this stuff that you've paid for or is this stuff you've done yourself? This, for the most part, is, uh, I was going to say semi-professional, but you've recorded it, Greg. <laughs> Live uh, rehearsal, multi-channel recorded rehearsal footage, um, multi-camera um, on-stage performance footage, maybe with uh, multi-track uh, recordings or just recordings from the desk and a couple of cameras, you know, modestly professional re recordings. But it wasn't not... something that you specifically went out to do. It was something that you were already doing and you just capitalised yeah. on it whilst you were to get a few extra momentum. And, and you know, oh, oh, <coughs> also some, some old music videos that are shot. Okay. So even like a music video from, from like 2012, 2013, Really, at the moment, they're just like sitting on YouTube now. I, it was just a case of, right, well, I'll take one old music video okay. and so one So you really weren't shy rehearsal. about using stuff that some people, because you do hear a lot that, oh, I've already released it, so I can't show it again. Well, yeah. And yeah. you were like, well. But it, by, by creating the equivalent of a new show with li almost mm. like new links, it, it recontextualizes it and, ma and makes it fresh. So that was the, that was the first half okay. of the year. As we entered into the, uh, the, the, the spring, yep. uh, I got yourself to record a, uh, a full gig, multi-camera shoot. Was that at the Lowry? No, 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 that was Chester. Oh, yes, of course. Oh, right, we did a multi -ca Yeah, sorry, yeah. Multi-camera shoot at a venue, so like a two-hour music set, yep. giving us opportunity for, you know, the, the potentially about 18 songs there that we could clip yep. and process. Mm -hmm. Then we, were, uh, me and you went to a festival, and that was, that was, a two, that was just a two-camera shoot. You had a, no, in fact, it was just, it, that was just one camera. Hang on, which? which that, that was Beard of Theory and Darby. No, we, we had two. Two what? Yeah, we had this one. No, no. Um, oh. We can, we can maybe edit this out well. I can't remember. I know that we used two to film sunscreen because I took that little Sony and my Osmo. Yeah, but that was that was the... Anyway. Anyway. Yeah, anyway. anyway. But yes, I came down and I took some cameras. I got, I, got, I got this young man here to uh, film some camera footage and take a feed from the desk. Yep, just that literally was, just a stereo. Yep. Nothing. I didn't... Although, you know, just to say, having multi-track stuff is great, but... Most of you probably can just, you know, you can get like little pocket tracks recorders for like 50 quid and you use them yeah. a lot. And and to be fair, if you can get like a four channel, we just usually just record the audience from the built in mics and then the digital feed, uh, sorry, a desk feed. And it is, it's more than good enough. Yeah, you know, everyone very much seems so. to think it's got to be amazing. And and it usually is much better than you're, you would hope it to be. but. It's all, you know, it's still a little rough around the edges, so to speak, than trying to make everything perfect. So, uh, so recorded a full gig, recorded a festival, recorded another full gig um, in a theatre. That was just one camera. Just laptop. one, just one camera. No, no fancy setup. Nope. Just one camera. Then we recorded uh, another festival uh, appearance later in the year. So what this is doing is it's giving my band a, a, a bank of content. And there's still no new songs in any of this. No it? new songs, all stuff that we've, you know, that, that the audience has heard before, but obviously fresh in the individual performances. And what it's been since the spring is a regular, almost fortnightly, sometimes weekly case of releasing all these videos. If one of them seems to really engage and uh, be attractive to my uh, social media audience, then I'm going right. I'll put a little bit of Facebook spend behind this and show it to people who I think are going to be my ideal target audience to try and get extra eyes on it and to bring new fans in. And this constant schedule of new content and running Facebook ads so it gets even more eyes on it seems to have done a variety of things. It seems to have reinvigorated my existing audience. Yep. And, you know, as in the case of, <coughs> oh, I've forgotten how good these are and... Here they are playing live because because this is one of the main things. What I'm doing is I'm showing people what my band is like live. So when it comes for me to go and we're playing live in your area, that's a whole easier sell just because they've seen it time and time again. They've seen hundreds of people having a great time. And, you know, as, uh, as Paddy McGuinness says, you know, it's show the punter, the, the, uh, the audience. I'm paraphrasing. 
But that, to be but fair, though, you have always, you know, from in terms of uh, it's always been said to me by Sheldon to focus on the audience when I've been filming these guys to some degree because it is about showing people have a good time. And yeah. if, if people can see that other people are having a good time, then why wouldn't they want to come and have a good time themselves? They want to be part of it. So we've got a momentum. We've got a constant uh, flow of content. Yep. And it, it's keeping that, that forward momentum so going. The content is new rather than the art itself. Yes. Right, okay. Just re-emphasising that point. So we've got momentum. We've got the ability to, to show more people uh, other than our existing audience what we're like on stage. And we can do that again and again, almost on a fortnightly basis. And, and we've got a, a perfect illustration of what my band is like live on stage. So when we do announce, say, for example, that we're, that we're playing in that particular area, more people are going to be inclined to go, I've seen these, admittedly, on my phone loads and loads of times. This looks like a, you know, a really great night out. There's tickets available. Bang. Let's can go. I just, can I actually put up now here, Carry as on. you say otherwise, um, you know, some <laughs> of the footage of the Larry that you then turned into a lyric based video. All right. That be, I won't play the sound, I'll just okay. to kind of I'll blank it over his face now. So, in terms of that, it's literally just one locked off camera. And you know, I've in order to create movement, I've added, I've, I've turned them all into lyric videos just to add, you know, because a locked off camera can be potentially quite yeah. boring. I've just put the lyrics over the top so as, as they're being so kind of something keeps, yeah. moving around, yeah. Uh, and stuff, and yeah, that was literally just one camera that I w was almost done as an afterthought, wasn't it? Yeah. So you know, it, it doesn't have to be. And now camera phones, I keep saying that. Um, you know, I've got a Huawei P30 Pro in it. It's oh, he's got it. He's talking about his new phone again. Uh, and stuff. So you know, something like that will be more than capable. So one of my friends' bands earlier on this year, when they played Liverpool, they had a, a pool of old. Um, iPhones that they no longer use if you're on an upgrade path and they Perfect. just filmed their entire gig on about four four different iPhones exactly. that's, that's all you need and a Joby phone mount and a small tripod um, will be you know um, more than sufficient uh, so and so yeah you, you don't need to go out and buy like Blackmagic cinema cameras or no. 5D Mark fives or whatever so to summarize i think a strategy for success is if you're able to constantly release content which shows people what you do know i appreciate that that maybe not many people are going to be maybe out there live and performing but if you're maybe a, you know an artist singer songwriter who primarily i don't know you know plays guitar or piano if you can regularly release maybe a, a video once a fortnight of you doing a cover or of you performing one of your uh, your own songs, you know, in your own rehearsal slash performing space, wherever that may be, that's a strategy for you to to execute. And and it may well be that if you know if you if you are a band and you're writing lots of songs, if you can put out content on a regular basis. I was reading something this week from a uh, someone who managed a. Uh, what was a, a successful in, indie rock band on the way up. Yeah. And he says that their aim was to release a single every six weeks, which is, that's, that's, quite, that's quite punishing. You have to have a bit of money behind that to, to record new songs with, with such a frequency. And you have and to- And the marketing campaign. And the marketing that goes behind that. But again, I think he was their manager and he was financing that. If, you, you know, if, you've, got, if you've got the money and the songwriting ability to do that, do something like that. But have a have a schedule whereby you're constantly releasing videos <coughs> which show people what you do and then have a little bit of marketing spend behind that to make sure that content reaches a wider audience. So in, right, so in terms of a lot of people do spend available funds on a, you know, shallow depth of field style music video. Music promo video. And you're kind of going, well, that's great, but, you know, they do quite happily put their hand in their pocket to pay for that, but then they'll have nothing left to tell anyone about it. And then they've got no more content. And I would suggest, and you probably would, uh, would support this, is that you do the ideas that we've said, because it's going to cost you very little, it's an because you're already there. And it's, you know, it is an expense, but think of it as an investment. And instead of spending that money on a DSLR style video, 
spend that money on promoting videos of you having a great time and the audience having a great time. For the maybe 500 to 1,000 pounds that it costs you to, re you know, to uh, get a, a videographer to, to record such a video, that money is better spent mm. on um, you know, either you know, going out and, and filming live or going to some sort of uh, you know, filming facility. Yeah. And, and and at the end of the day, I mean, I think a lot of these people are, are creating these style of style of videos and whatever to to raise their profile, to be taken more seriously, to get the gigs that they want. But in all likelihood, this and spending money on this instead of a DSLR video is going to get you to your destination a lot, lot quicker. People need to see what you do and not how you mine. Yes, exactly. And they need to see it again and again and again. And, again. again. and eventually, you'll, you know, the, if you're constantly popping up on someone's news feed on whatever platform and, you know, they can see you being brilliant at what you do again and again and again. And they then, also see people having an amazing time experiencing it. There you go. You, you, you know. It all starts to make sense, really, doesn't it? Exactly. So, so believe it or not, Greg, before the year is out, I'm going to get you to record yet another one of our full concerts. What a surprise. Because then I've got a bank of uh, content that for... I can use during the two months and uh, beyond downtime. You, you, you see? You this through. You see? It? So the only question I'm going to ask is, is that a multiple camera or just... Uh, well, we've, that, we'll, we'll chat about that uh, once the... Uh, once the show's finished. But yes, yeah, so to to summarise. To summarise. Spend your money so much better than just going for what you think are the things that people want. Invest your money in a, a system that can regularly show people what you do on the social networks and on YouTube. And the more people get to see what you do, the more they will want to see it in real life. Yep, and before you know it, you will be, you know, getting people at your gigs and that will make you feel better than having a fancy DSLR style video. Yes, it's making me feel better because I'm going to be going to yet another sold out show uh, tomorrow night as we're recording this. So, you know, it does work. It does, it does. Right, um, if questions, you've got Benita. any questions that you'd like us to answer, any problems that you'd like us to scratch our chin and offer you a solution, stick them in the comment box uh, below or find us somewhere on Twitter. I mean, I, I'm on Twitter at on 60, uh, 30, 60 second, 30, 60 second music marketing. I just, I don't know. And we're on uh, Instagram, Elusive Studios. Um, and anelusivecountry.com. If you've got a problem, uh, yo, I'll solve it. That that doesn't really work. I'm, I'm not vanilla rice. I thought you were going to go down the A team. No, 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 no. Uh, well, we'll, we can save that one for next week. Anyway, thanks for watching this week's Cheers. show. We'll see you next time. Hashtag Music Marketing Monday. Bye, bye. bye.